Welcome once again, Galatians chapter 2, verses 11 right through to verse 19. Paul, the Apostle Paul, versus Peter. Paul writes, But when Peter came to Antioch, I resisted him to his face because he stood condemned. Wow, think about this for a minute. Here is Paul and Peter. Paul is resisting Peter to his face. He is opposing Peter to his face. Peter here was one of the closest to Jesus. Look at it like this. In the center is like Jesus. He is in the center. Around him are the 12 disciples. The 12 disciples followed Jesus everywhere. And they lived with him. They heard him speak. They knew him very, very well. But of those 12, Peter, James, and John went places with Jesus that the others were not allowed to go. So Peter, James, and John would know Jesus more than the other nine. So Peter was very, very close to Jesus. Where's Paul in the equation? Paul wasn't even in the equation until much later. He wasn't even qualified to be part of the original 12. Check out the teaching on Acts chapter 1 for more details. But here's Peter. Obviously, Peter here in this context was fallible. If Peter was fallible, if Peter here makes mistakes and says and does things wrong, if Peter is fallible, how much more Paul? Does that mean that we are to doubt everything they say? Of course not. Being fallible, making mistakes every once in a while, that just makes it even more real, even more believable, because you know what mistakes they made. When you identify the mistakes, that's to say that you know it's a mistake. You know that they missed it here. That means that you know what is believable, what is not believable. It makes you stronger in your faith. Paul continues about Peter, for before some people came from James, he ate with the Gentiles. But when they came, he drew back and separated himself, fearing those who were of the circumcision. James here, one of the leaders of the church in Jerusalem, the mother church in Jerusalem. James was Jewish, and everybody that came from that circle was Jewish. They were of the circumcision. When Peter was in Antioch, when he was away from the Jews, he acted like a Gentile. But when James and his Jewish crowd came, well, Peter then, he separated himself from the Gentiles and he acted more like a Jew. And the rest of the Jews joined with him in his hypocrisy. Hypocrisy here. Two-face, double life, so that even Barnabas was carried away with their hypocrisy. But when I saw that they didn't walk uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, the good news, I said to Peter before them all, before them all, publicly, if you, being a Jew, live as the Gentiles do and not as the Jews do, why do you compel the Gentiles to live as the Jews do? We, being Jews by nature, are not Gentile sinners, yet knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but through faith in Jesus Christ, even we believed in Christ Jesus, that we might be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law, because no flesh will be justified by the works of the law. But if while we sought to be justified in Christ, we ourselves also were found sinners, is Christ a servant of sin? Certainly not. For if I built up again those things which I destroyed, I prove myself a lawbreaker. He doesn't want to be a lawbreaker here. You notice the tone. He doesn't want to be a Torah breaker. For I, through the law, died to the law that I might live to God. Paul makes it very, very clear here. The law, the Torah in and of itself does not make people obey it, okay? Words on paper, on parchment, etched in stone, in and of itself does not make people obey it. It is faith in Yeshua. It is the faith in the Messiah that gives you the power to obey it. Notice. 
Paul said those who sought to be justified in Christ were found sinners, okay? Notice here that Paul makes Christ and the law synonymous here. It is the law that teaches us that we are sinners. And it is Christ also that teaches us that we are sinners. Christ and the law work together, okay? Jesus is the Word in the flesh. Jesus is the Word of God, the Torah in human form. You can't say, well, I, I, I just have faith in Jesus, but I don't obey the Torah. That's like saying, well, I have faith in the Torah, but I don't obey the Torah. That doesn't make sense. Jesus is the human Torah. He is our perfect example of obedience to Torah. Let's take that example. Seek God while he may be found. And if you seek him with all your heart, I guarantee you, you will find him. Call upon him and he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.